told you this all-new RV was not a toy hauler. Hello and welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here actually down at Forest River's little media facility where they take all the fancy pictures they put on their website. I heard they had all of their new V-Series models up here. These are what I'm going to call something in the way of like a crossover where it's not a traditional toy hauler in that traditional sense where it's just got a big open garage and you can park a side-by-side -side razor in it, brother. This is something different. This is something that, yes, it has a ramp patio. Yes, it has a smaller cargo loading space, maybe for like kayaks or a couple e-bikes or dog kennels or, or maybe just a golf cart. Not everybody necessarily needs space for uh, a four-seater side-by-side uh, ATV, although those things are very fun and there's definitely a place for that in the market. That's not everybody's idea of camping. There's some folks that just want something like a patio who don't want to have to like buy a whole giant toy hauler. This can be that. This can be a bunkhouse. This can be a couple's camper. This can have its own little desk space. This is an incredibly flexible new concept that frankly, I'm here for. I'm a person that even though I tend to camp pretty much one way, I'm just a Midwestern park camping type kid. I like to have options. It just makes me feel good. And it's fun when things are weird and different for me. That's just my personal quirky, nerdy little way of saying things. But this one right here, uh, with the, it's, it's almost like it's built off the, the FSX Max platform where it's extra tall inside, tandem axle wider, and it has uh, approaching 4,000 pounds of cargo capacity, so it's, it's got plenty of heft to it. That also means, though, you're probably going to want to keep a little bit of an eye on your vehicle because when you see 5,800 pounds dry or whatever this is, you're like, oh, half ton towable all day. And then you see where it's got almost 4,000 pounds of cargo. You're going to want to keep stuff like that in mind and telling you the good with the bad. We're going to close it up for road mode access and all kinds of different things. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like those extra details. Let's get started. And it's kind of crazy. Like, I've seen some many of the elements of of this these v series rvs i've seen them done before but never quite like in this combination never with this sort of like intention and these are definitely not going to be for everybody they're weird and they're different but i maybe that's why i like them so much like i love the ceilings these are like seven foot ceilings in these and notice how they really maximize that by going uh with a full height slide that even includes the nice white accent lighting right above it. Now, it's interesting because the FSX division that we're looking at and the the, the Wildwood and the X-Lights, they are actually two completely different divisions. Now, you can certainly see that they're related, but they're different um, designers, they're different builders, they're different mindsets completely. So, you know, this is a very, very different animal. And um, as a result, we'll do some very, very different things. Like you may have noticed a true theater seat over here, and that's actually where I'm parking my backside right now. And it is about 6,000% humidity. I'd like to call my friends uh, down in Georgia and tell them to come get their humidity. We don't want it anymore. Holy cow. I mean, you know, I've lived here my whole life. I've seen all four seasons within one day before, more than once, but the humidity that's out here right now is just crazy. Like, I don't know if I'm sweating or if I'm condensating. I'm really not sure. Uh, now over here, this, um, the TV block, should you choose to add a TV, it's at the you know, really solid spot straight across from the theater seat, albeit a little high, but not the end of the world. We're going to see that the entire thing actually pivots, not just like the, uh, the, cause it looks like just a flat bracket. There's a swing arm behind that. That's actually a door for like a mini cabinet. Just that kind of weird, goofy stuff is what you're going to find here. And it doesn't have a traditional dinette. Instead, what you have is it has a little bit more of like this little kind of elevated breakfast bar situation. And what that creates is a monstrously large countertop. Now to help kind of uh, drive that home, I brought my laptop in because I'm, you know, I gotta unload my camera when I'm done, but I went ahead and just set it right up here. Like if I was gonna be some kind of laptop desk warrior and holy crap, you can still do kitchen prep space even if somebody's using uh, you know, part of that area. That's that's something not a lot of RVs can actually do. And you might notice that indirect accent lighting all the way under the countertop. Just nice little touches. I will say this, it's my personal opinion and I welcome you to share your personal opinion. I think the round sink was not the best decision for this. 
I think that this RV is big enough that a, uh, a a normal like farm sink or two basin sink or something like that should work. What would you what would you prefer to see for sinks on these? And I forgot to pull it up, but this entry door with the window does have the full privacy shade factory installed right in it, which makes me laugh when a brand like this can do that. And then these like luxury fifth wheel and toy haulers with all of their budget don't. It just, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem quite spot on to me, but that's again, just my nerdy little opinion. That is a jackknife sofa below that little Murphy function. We're gonna come back later and see all of the storage and uh, we're gonna get to see how that opens and closes. It is what I call a folding bendy bed. So that might be something that some folks wanna kind of keep in mind. I love the big wide open side stands on both sides of the bed and the household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. And I, sorry, I just walked into like a cabinet behind me if the camera lurched real hard suddenly right there. But again, a full theater seat right here. This is something that other than um, the destination Salem Wildwoods, which is yet another total different division and factory um it's something that you've never really seen from this group before so it's cool to see them finally start getting into that a little bit now this i thought was really interesting there's so many times manufacturers put a fridge in a slide and then it's just dead pocket space behind it now that shelf yeah you have to kind of climb um you know you have to do the loop knee walker routine you have to put your knee on the couch and kind of reach back there like you're going to give an elephant an enema and it's not ideal but if you got some kind of wicker baskets or totes or something that you could slide toward you, it might make that a little bit easier. Uh, just, just a little, uh, just a little idea there. Now that is a 12 volt compressor fridge, and FSX was actually the first one to use that. I call it the AC/DC fridge door, where it can open both ways. Um, and what's cool about that is if you're just sitting here in the living room and you want to grab a drink or you're cooking in the kitchen, it, it makes perfect sense. It works just fine. If you're coming from the garage and you open it the other way, it also kind of makes sense because there's no wrong way to open it. You can see that heat duct built right into the cabinet face right there. You won't see them in the floor. These are um, carpetless and ventless all the way through. So not only does that great, like, you know, if, if you're going to load a four-wheeler or uh, a golf cart or something back in that kind of cargo space, I don't even want to call it a garage. I want to call it a cargo space. Um, or if you got if you got pets, if you got a four-legged furry friend, they are going to be able to get along just fine in here. Now, we're going to come back to this whole thing in just a minute because that's kind of something very special. I'm very excited to show that to you. But while we're on our way, first, just a quick peek at the bathroom. The toilet space was not bad, but... There's that little wooden box down there, and that's where they have either some plumbing or some wiring or something like that is run down there. And I couldn't decide if my foot belonged on top of it or not. <laughs> it was a little bit different. And um, this is also different. They went with like a, a cabinet with a mirror beside it. And you'll hear me say in a lot of my videos that I, I really like a window in a bathroom because I think it churches up the joint. Usually I use those exact words, actually, I think. I think this mirror is kind of providing that same function. And part of the reason is like we're inside right now. And most of the time skylights are pro are providing you with the, the lighting that like you're going to see in my videos in the shower. That's not the case here because it actually has a uh, Ahsoka Tano lightsaber beam right there. Hers being the white blades, uh, which is very, very cool looking, by the way. And, and frankly, with this being so tall, like I'm a little over six foot. I got a question. Should it even include a skylight above the shower being this tall? I'm not so sure it should. That um, I will also tell you, one of the reasons that I'm not really, uh, I don't know that it needs to be here because, uh, you know, you don't need it for the headroom in the shower. It's just why most RVs have skylights um, in travel trailers anyway. But uh, the thing is, because the skylight heats up and cools down more violently than the, the rest of the stuff on the roof, um, it tends to mean that the skylights, uh, uh, what do I want to say here? Um, uh, seals, yeah. They get cooked and baked and they fail first. So getting rid of that skylight removes, uh, in, in my experience, one of the single most common failure points on an RV. Now, obviously, we're coming back here on the, uh, uh, you know, garage patio space. <gasps> I just noticed something. Look at how high they put the taillights. That is a really smart safety feature. And, and here's the reason, like when you're driving, 
Um, if you tend to tune out, your eyes tend to kind of slowly look down a little bit. But if you have an emergency brake scenario, your eyes snap up. Well, by having those lights in that higher up position, it, it makes them more likely to be seen. Um, the uh, Back here on the patio, this is kind of cool. You can have your own rear patio entertainment. And I like this handy little sink station. This, this little kind of drink station, maybe. You know, everybody likes hanging out in the kitchen because that's where the food and the drinks are. You can maybe do a little bit of that back here. I'd throw a cooler on the tailgate with me, and I'd, I'd have a good time. Now, these windows over here, uh, both of them do open for airflow, and they both have snap-on blackout uh, kind of privacy shades. So if you want to really keep the sun out, you want to add some privacy back here, you can do that. And back here in the little cargo area, you do have a pair of these uh, little um, air vents so that if you're loading something with a combustion engine, you can make sure that you breathe out that nasty exhaust before it kind of sinks into all the soft goods uh, in your RV. Now, I will tell you, when we're, uh, I'm about to fold all this up and show you all the cool functions it can do, but the these two cushions, that back cushion and that bottom cushion, you do have to put them somewhere. They don't just fold up. The cushion on the top bunk, now that one stays exactly where it's at, so that's not a problem. And consider this. Being seven foot tall versus an, uh, an industry standard six and a half foot RV, you have three extra inches of room for each bed. And that doesn't sound like a lot until you've sat up in a bunk and about cold cocked yourself and you don't run into that here. Um, and you can see this is made by Moride. I will tell you, it is fairly heavy, but hey, if my chicken arms can do it, yours probably can too. But I like that it includes the like, hey, uh, drunken uncle, don't fall out of bed kind of safety rail over here. And it even includes its own handy dandy little ladder, but check this out. The ladder is built in, the ladder slides out of the way, magnet catches on the bottom, you can pin everything in place, and then um, you uh, basically flip the bottom thing up and it can either be like a little shelf or, or like food station, drink station, a, a, a mini laptop station. I've actually set up on one of those before and it got the job done pretty darn well. Um, and there's the tote storage down below that. There's also three more of those totes up under the front bed. So this RV has huge cargo capacity and y you know, you, you can actually load the whole thing. There's so many RVs that have big cargo space, but not enough actual cargo capacity on the RV. And there's, uh, I, I don't really have a lot of stats. It's been kind of just my empirical evidence experience um, just through observation that when uh, an RV has a really high cargo capacity, the RV tends not to rattle trap apart going down the road because the structure is not like getting overstressed the entire time. That is just sort of, you know, a little bit of what I've noticed here. Now, as long as we're diving into the details, I told you we'd come back and take a look at some things uh, up in here, up in here. First of all, take a look at that uh, area where the TV mount, and like I said, that is a cabinet behind it. Under the sink, I kind of wish they'd have left us a little spot for a wastebasket next to that convection microwave. You might notice this does not have a propane gas oven in the kitchen, but it does have like dedicated pantry space, overhead cabinet space. Like it's done that very, very well. Then over here, you've got your Murphy bed. It is a bendy bed kind of scenario where uh, the mattress does have a fold. It doesn't have like a gas strut to put the platform kind of up and down or anything like that. Uh, you know, it is a very manual situation. Here's how I, I think I would probably use this. I think I would probably ignore the fact that it's a Murphy bed and I'd put uh, a, a nice foam topper at least on that backbreaker death wafer mattress from the factory. And I would probably just leave it down as a walk around bed the whole time. That's probably what I would do. But if I was going to have some guests over, if I was going to be stuck inside on a rainy day, spend some extra time in here, I might put the bed away and regain some living space like we're kind of looking at through most of the video. Um, I, you know, I'd be kind of curious, folks who actually own Murphy Bed Campers, you know, how do you, you use them? Like, do you put them up and down every day? Do you leave them one way or the other? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Leave us all some comments. Maybe that'll help both me and maybe somebody else who's looking. Now, when you're sitting here, once again, just huge, huge counter space. And even with my laptop there, you can see all the space uh, that you still have available for uh, prep and function and everything. I love all the outlets. That's one of the unsung qualities of a stick-built camper. Now, you can get this with common tin skin or fiberglass skin. We're going to touch on that more later. But the fact is, 
uh, you, uh, you, you kind of get to pick your own poison a little bit on this one, but what I'm not sure of, I mentioned leaving the bed down. I'm eyeballing it. I think we might be able to leave the bed down in transit. Let's close that slide and find out. Ooh, ooh, you can, and with room to spare. Holy cow. Actually, here you go. If you leave the bed down all the time, you're like, well, do I still have room to use the chairs? Yeah, I, I personally think you do. People can still come and go pretty comfortably in the RV. Um, or if you didn't care about the Murphy bed function and you just wanted to put in like a really nice queen mattress here, you could do that. And then remember, you have the totes under the bed for easy kind of access. However, <sighs> there's always a butt, and this one's a big butt. Uh, when the deep slide comes right up to that kitchen counter, unless you're going to yeet the wife and kids over the bed or do the Dukes of Hazard butt scoop boogie yeehaw over the top of that thing, you're, uh, you're not going to have the greatest of travel access. I had a little thought on that though. A lot of times travel access people need to be able to access the RV within a parking space. Parking spaces tend to go, well, let's call it vertically, you know, uh, north, south versus east, west. And the tailgate opens off the back of the RV. If you're in like a big truck parking lot, you might actually be able to like drop the tailgate to get into the back section, to get to the kitchen, to get to the, uh, the bathroom and all that. But don't get me wrong, that feels very much like shoving a square peg in a round hole. What I'm saying is like, hey, if uh, when, I was a grandkid that always said I don't need to use the bathroom and then five minutes in the ride was said I had to go potty, like constantly. Well, if it's like a, uh, hey, my kid's gonna pee their pants or we drop the tailgate and get in the bathroom thing, I would make this work. I'm not saying you should have to do it every single time, but eh, it's a thought. But I think I might have just stumbled into something that might be kind of cool on these bendy beds that I never really thought about before. I was just sort of walking through the RV and I hadn't finished setting this one up. And you know those like power headlift beds, you know, like a sleep number bed or something like that? You can kind of do that here. So if it's like a rainy day and, you know, the theater seat isn't feeling comfy, you want to kind of half lounge sort of thing, like you could sort of do that and... I don't, I don't know that I hate that. I, that might actually be kind of nice. I don't know. And I kind of talked about this when our video began. Uh, when you see like 58, 5,900 pound dry weight, people are like, oh man, half ton towable all day long. And there's gonna be a ton of places. There's gonna be a ton of people that are more than willing to take your money and say half ton towable, absolutely, without so much as batting an eyelash or even asking more questions. Um, keep an eye on the hitch weight. Keep an eye on the total GVW of this one. Um, it's, it might be the kind of thing where if you're, if you got a really, really heavy half, yeah, maybe there's some potential there, but if you're going to go cross country through the mountains, you may want to bump your truck up a notch to something like a three quarter. Now up top here, you can see that 200 watt factory solar package with 30 amp controller. So if you want to expand on that a little bit, you can tankless on demand water heater and speakers down at your chesticles. So they're not uh, up blowing away the neighbors with your free bird freedom rock kind of thing. Um, the uh, little mini griddle camp kitchen station over here, there, you know, there's that massive chunk of kitchen counter space and you can't like physically access all of that from the inside. So they opened a chunk of it outdoors. Now, if you don't care about this thing, if you don't like it, it, it is standard. It's not an option, but that's basically just a drawer. Like you could take the griddle out and just basically have like a, a little slide out, I don't know, drink station or something like that. And just being fair, if you are cooking on that griddle, you can still open the refrigerator, but uh, watch your forearms. You're gonna look like a chef on the Food Network with burns on the underside of your arms. If you ever meet a chef in real life, um, look at the undersides of their arms. They're gonna have all kinds of little scald marks from like reaching into ovens or you know burning themselves on hot pans. Just a random little, it has nothing to do with RVing factoid for you. I don't think that'll ever be on Jeopardy. Probably not the most useful information. Now their Murphy bed and tote storage system. It does mean that the outside front pass-through obviously is a little bit of a, a you know a bend around the corner kind of system right here. And, I, and I'm kind of curious. What if they didn't do the totes under the bed on the inside and they just gave it a full front pass through on the outside? Like which way is better? 
in your opinion and estimation? And I don't know that there's necessarily one correct or incorrect answer. I'm just kind of curious to see if we can identify a little bit of a trend there. Now, uh, again, this uh, V series is basically um, it, it, it's based off the uh, the Max series of Salem Wildwood toy haulers, where um, you know it is a full eight foot wide. It is tandem axle. Uh, you've got things like the better stabilizers up here, and those quick drop stabilizers, uh, they, they are absolutely worth the hype. Like, they live up to the hype for real. And what's funny is visually, you can just tell if they're going to work or not. You see that little red wedge down there? As long as that vertical stabilization arm is past that red wedge, it's going to work. And the closer to straight vertical you can get that support arm, the better. Another cool thing on those is those are actually rated to be able to, uh, to be put up and down with like a uh, you know cordless impact drill or something like that. Common scissor jacks, you actually aren't supposed to do that, although people have for years, and I didn't even know that until like last year or the year before. I've been telling people to do it for years myself, but that's the thing. You're never done learning, and it's okay to say, I got something wrong in the past, you know? Now, by the way, this big old bundle of cloth, you see the little magnets, the silvery things on it? What we're looking at there is uh, that is the magnetic screen wall for the, uh, the garage area. Now, I, I just noticed something. This is my first time ever going around these. I've never even stepped foot on this side of the RV. Notice that it looks like for the kitchen, you do have a gray tank outlet right there. Um, I kind of wish they'd have put the, uh, the, the, the pull handle for that facing the other direction. That is something that could be tweaked after market. It's not like it's stuck that way from the factory. But then over here, you have your bathroom black and gray. Uh, so this is a two-headed sewer monster. That is not necessarily a lot of folks' favorite thing. But hey, it doesn't have to be... Um, pretty or convenient. It just has to be true and I want to report it. Now it's easy to miss, but look at the uh, the upper corner of the RV over here. You can see that black bracket up there. These are prepped and ready for one of those telescopic removable ladders. Those are rated for about 330 pounds, which is actually like a normal fixed ladder on the back of an RV is only about 250. Um, historically, they were only 200. Industry standard did improve that way. Um, safety guidelines because American folks, Sometimes we carry some extra weight. I certainly am um, among that. And you know, there's, there's no, uh, no criticism or judgment. I'm carrying probably about 40 pounds I don't need to carry right now. But the problem is McNuggets are delicious. <laughs> they should be called fat McNuggets, by the way. There's almost no actual chicken in them. It's just leftover like skin and everything else. Again, these are little trivia factoids that uh, will never be on Jeopardy that now you know. Uh, you know, like kangaroos hop, uh, can't hop backwards. Did you see that motion light kick on? That was cool. So if you're sitting up here on the patio in the evening while you're sitting there moving around, yeah, you'll have light. Or when you're loading something, you know. But if you, uh, you know, you hop inside, you don't think about it, that light will turn itself off, and then you don't have uh, the getting blinded by the light, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Manfred Mann style. Because your neighbors, if, if you blind your neighbors uh, by the light, they will get revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. <laughs> So you've got the sewer caddy hose tube back here as well, by the way, and you do still have the enclosed forced air heated accessibility system on this, which is sectionalized drop panels. God forbid you need service stuff. This makes it a lot, lot easier. Now, this is just the very first of this new V series that they have coming out here. They have two other floor plans at the time that I'm releasing this video, and I will be getting footage of those today. You can actually kind of see them peek it over here in the background. One other quick little note. Today, we saw something where the sticker said Salem FSX. Wildwood FSX is literally the exact same thing. Uh, just the stickers are a different color other than blue. Beyond that, it's the exact same thing. And you're actually seeing back here, you can get them both in the platinum fiberglass package. And I will leave you one link in the video description to check for pricing and availability on any of these, whether it's Salem, Wildwood, Standard, Platinum Series, whatever the case may be. Um, the Platinum Series, by the way, the only real difference in the model number there, they add an X to the end of it just to help people realize that it's something slightly different. But eh, there you go, teach you how to fish a little bit rather than just cook you dinner. When you are ready, we are ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just try to give you all the information to help you find your second RV the first time. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.